I talk to enough doctors and doctors when I mention any film alternatives. Well, I only work with drugs that are proven and effective, you know, proven in research. And I'll ask them specifically about, you know, give me a drug you're talking about. And I'll ask them about the research. Well, it turns out they really never read the research. They don't really understand it. A lot of them will say, I don't really understand how to read a research paper. Or they'll read, they'll, they'll you know, name a research paper that was published that was published by the industry, it was, it was performed by the industry, it was incredibly biased, they don't know how to critique, they don't know how to read these things with a critical eye. So I know that there, most doctors really have not learned to look at research papers, they don't bother to read them, and if they do read them, they really don't understand how to look at them with a critical eye in terms of the variables and how it's set up with bias. So. Once I talk to them and challenge them, it turns out that they back down and don't really know what they're talking about. Um, that's very common. They'll just say, you know, I take, they, when it comes down to it, what they do is they take the drug company salesperson's information at face value and are very unaware of all the corruption that's going on and how the drug company consortiums have, you know, the pharmaceutical industry has a giant consortium on the Hill and really controls and writes a lot of legislation. And so this is a huge problem that doctors are completely unaware of. They're unaware that, that studies are set up with an inherent bias because they'll go to a department that has a lot of funding and say, this is the results we want, set up a study that gives us this results. Because if you don't do that, you don't get funding for your department anymore. You know, the problem isn't just that the federal regulatory agencies are in cahoots because everyone's waiting for their lobbying job. They want to leave working for federal government and go leave the FDA or leave leave the NIH or the CDC and go work for pharma for a huge amount of money um, or work for the lobbyists, you know, be a lobbyist because you get paid a lot of money to lobby on the Hill for the pharmaceutical industry, way more than working at the FDA. So there is this revolving door that everyone's waiting for their, their, big, their big day, their big day to make a lot of money. But there's also in academia now, this is the problem. You know, this is infiltrated from the regulatory agencies into academia. And what we see is that people high up in the institution who are receiving funding for their lab or their department are, you know, they go along with this because this is how they get funded. And if they don't do it, they don't get their funding. But the average worker bee doctor takes things at face value. And when you challenge them and ask them about the studies and specifics, they don't know anything. They haven't read the study. If they've read the study, they don't understand it. You know, they don't know how to look for the, the uh, issues with, with setting up things with bias. And they certainly don't look at who funded the study. So this is the problem that I see. We don't train our medical students to be critical in terms of looking at research. We don't train our medical students to be critical about the corruption in the medical industrial complex. And so what we have are the worker bee doctors on the streets, in the offices, even in the institutions, that are clueless about corruption and they really buy the, the, the drug company rhetoric at face value.